software just continues to become an even more powerful force in productivity. It began as a way to create web apps or really robust interfaces for your spreadsheets or databases in apps like Notion or Airtable. But then it released its own sophisticated databases. And then just recently it launched workflows which make it easy for anyone to create automations between other apps or within the software ecosystem. They're a whole lot simpler than dedicated automation tools like Zapier or Make. But with AI actions that can access the web, they're much more capable than the automation features in apps like Notion or Airtable. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a workflow with an example that's dead simple but incredibly useful. We'll have a conventional inquiry form on a website, and then for each submission, the workflow is going to research the company that submitted it to compose a personalized response. It'll send that response automatically and then add the submission to a Notion database for managing it within your cohesive system. And then lastly, it'll send a Slack notification with all the details. So before we jump into the software workflow, let's take a quick look at the other apps it'll reference. And for your own reference, as you practice with workflows, I've made all of these components available as a template bundle on Productivity Nexus, which I've linked to in the video description. And if you have any questions about their configurations or the workflow itself, just comment on YouTube. So the sample inquiry form is built with Tally, which is one of my favorite form tools for a multitude of reasons. One of which is that with just a click, you can configure it to feed responses into a Google Sheet. And here's that Google Sheet. You'll see in a second why it's useful. And then over in Notion, we have a database of consulting inquiries with a property for each form field, among other properties for managing the submissions and connecting them with your broader operating system. If you're familiar with my Bulletproof framework and Notion template, you know that my number one rule is to structure all information in related master databases to make it endlessly useful. That lets you view it in helpful contexts, integrate it with other apps, and as we're doing now, automate it. Now let's configure the workflow. If you haven't already, you'll want to create a free account with Softer, and you can use the link in the video description. And then in the left sidebar, you'll find a new workflows option where you can create a new workflow. Now every automation, whether in Softer or another tool, is going to be built with a trigger followed by a sequence of actions. And the reason I wanted that tally form to feed into a Google Sheet is because automations can be triggered by new rows within Google Sheets. So for this trigger, we'll choose Google Sheets, and then you'll choose an account that you previously connected, or if it's your first time, connect a new one. And for the document, we'll choose that Google Sheet that receives those tally submissions, and then specify the sheet within the spreadsheet. In this case, we have just submissions. And when we test it, we can see a value for each column in the Google Sheet, which corresponds with the form fields, and we can use those values in subsequent workflow actions. So for the first action, we want AI to research the company that submitted the form and compose a personalized response. And we'll use Softer AI, which is available on the free plan, and then Custom Prompt. And I'm not going to walk through the full prompt here. You can grab that on productivity.nexus. But generally, we instruct it to reference the submitted information to conduct research on the company and then populate a template with personalized values based on its findings. And this ability of the AI action to search the web is a powerful distinctive advantage of software over automation features and other apps. And then what might be your most important takeaway here is that by clicking this at symbol, you can use the values of previous steps as the inputs. You can do that for any action, and in this case, we provide it with the form field values. And when we test it, we can see our beautifully personalized response. And then the next step is to send that response. So for that, we use the Gmail action with the send email option. And as with the Google Sheet, you'll choose an existing account or connect a new one. And then for the configuration, all of the inputs are going to use values from previous steps. The recipient will be the email address submitted with the form. The subject line will include the company's name. And then the body will be the message that was personalized by the AI action, along with a custom signature with a little HTML styling. And to test the email, you can replace the dynamic recipient with a static email address that goes to your inbox. So I'll use good old Whaley, and after sending the test, we can go to the inbox, see our custom subject line, and the nicely formatted personalized email. And then for managing the inquiry within our cohesive Notion system, we want to add it to the consulting inquiries database. 
So the next action will be Notion Add Record. And as always, we'll choose an existing account or add a new one, and then select the database where we want to add the item. And then you'll toggle the properties you want to populate. In this case, we want the fields that correspond with the Google Sheets columns, which correspond with the form fields. And we also have a property where we can add the personalized message for future reference. And then for each property, we'll click on it and use the at symbol to select the corresponding value from the Google Sheets trigger. And for the personalized message, we'll grab that from the AI step. And with a real test, we can see the submission added to the database. And then lastly, we want to send a Slack notification with an overview of the submission. So we'll choose Slack and post a channel message. And you know the drill by now, we'll choose an existing account or connect a new one, select the channel where we want to post the message, and then compose the message using whatever values you want to include from previous steps. And software also gives you the option to customize the name of the bot that sends the message, as well as its icon. And I like to disable expanded links to keep the Slack thread clean. So as always, we can test it and see its seamless execution. And with that, our workflow is complete. It's that simple. We'll give it a name, turn it on, and now when we submit an inquiry, we get a personalized response. It's added to Notion for maximum usability, and we're notified in Slack. Grab those templates on Productivity Nexus and let me know on YouTube if you have any questions.